Now in the book you'll see a list of the most commonly tested autosomal recessive diseases. As a review, these diseases generally only appear in one generation at a time, since disease alleles are rare. And a patient with the disease has to have two parents or at least carriers. Now all of the diseases listed here in the book are covered in more depth in other places, and some later in this chapter. But the one I'll cover next is cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is one of the autosomal recessive disorders and is caused by a defect in the CFTR gene, which stands for cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. The most common mutation in this gene is mutation of the phenylalanine at the 508 position, which leads to an improperly folded protein which would be degraded by the cell. CFTR codes for chloride channel, which actively secretes chloride out into the lungs and GI tract. It also actively resorbs chloride ions from sweat. Since water follows solute across the membrane, the inability to secrete chloride results in a thicker mucus in the lungs, pancreas, and liver, which can block pancreatic secretions and permit pulmonary infections, especially by Pseudomonas and Staph aureus. One of the first symptoms to present is meconium ileus in newborns. Since the meconium is abnormally thick and forms a mechanical obstruction, resulting in abdominal distension and vomiting soon after birth. The majority of meconium ileus is due to cystic fibrosis, so if you see this symptom on your test, think of CF. However, only a minority of patients with CF have meconium ileus, so don't use the lack of this symptom to rule out CF. One symptom that can be used to diagnose CF is salty sweat, which is caused by the inability to reabsorb chloride. How do you think this would affect blood volume? Since this causes salt wasting, and you need salt to maintain blood volume, this can cause hypovolemia. Some other symptoms include infertility in males, since the vas deferens are absent, and fat-soluble vitamin deficiencies since they can't absorb them due to the steatorrhea caused by pancreatic insufficiency. On a chest x-ray, you will often see enlarged bronchi like the ones in this image. You should also know that cystic fibrosis is the most lethal genetic disease in Caucasians, and patients have an average life expectancy of 36 years. Treatment is supportive only, and one of the most common drugs is N-acetylcysteine, which can cleave the mucus bonds and mucus glycoproteins to loosen mucus and allow it to be cleared. Can you think of another unrelated use for N-acetylcysteine? One common use is as an antidote for acetaminophen overdose. Patients with cystic fibrosis can also be given lipases to make up for the lack of pancreatic enzymes in the small intestine. Okay, let's talk about X-linked recessive disorders. Remember, these diseases most commonly affect males who always inherit it from their mother. You can identify these in a family tree using the process of elimination. So for this tree, you can tell it can't be autosomal dominant or X-linked dominant since you don't see it in all generations. And it's not mitochondrial, since nobody's getting it from their mother. So it could technically be either autosomal recessive or X-linked recessive, but this one's more likely to be X-linked recessive. First of all, autosomal recessive diseases you will almost never see in more than one generation, since at least for the sake of the test, you should assume that it's rare in the population, so the odds of both grandparents being carriers and this other male being a carrier are almost non-existent. It's a lot more likely that there's only one disease allele, which is getting passed from person to person. What's going on here is that the grandmother in this family is a carrier for an X-linked recessive disease. So she doesn't have the disease, but she can pass it on to her son. And he will be affected since he has no normal copy to make up for it, like his sister does over here. And then she can pass it on to her son the exact same way. In your book, you have a list of the most common X-linked recessive disorders and a nice mnemonic you can use to remember them. I recommend that you go ahead and commit these to memory, because on the test you may get a question that describes one of these diseases, like Hunter syndrome, and then since they like multi-level questions, they won't just ask you what the disease is, but they'll ask you what type of inheritance pattern it has. So you'll need to know that it's X-linked recessive. Hunter in particular is easy to remember if you just think of the mnemonic, Hunter's aim for the X. Again, these diseases are covered in more depth than other places, but using this list and this mnemonic can help you remember which diseases are X-linked recessive. Muscular dystrophies are diseases characterized by muscle weakness, usually caused by the death of myocytes. There are a few different types. Duchenne and Becker muscular dystrophies are both caused by a mutation in the same gene, called dystrophin. The dystrophin protein is cytoplasmic, 
but is part of a larger multi-protein complex that anchors the cytoskeleton of the skeletal and cardiac muscle to the extracellular matrix through the membrane. It also happens to be the longest known human gene, which means that just through sheer probability, it's also the most likely to get spontaneous mutations. If dystrophin is defective, it can cause membrane abnormalities that screw up calcium homeostasis and eventually cause cell death through necrosis. Dead cells will eventually be replaced by fat, which you can see in this image. Now dystrophin is on the X chromosome, so who do you think is more likely to get it, males or females? That would be males, and in fact, it's extraordinarily rare for females to get this. Okay, so what's the difference between Duchenne and Becker? Well, first of all, Duchenne is more common, although both of them are pretty rare. Duchenne affects 1 in 3,600 boys, and Becker affects 1 in 18,000. Duchenne is also more serious. So these are both caused by mutations in the same gene, so how come one is more serious than the other? This is because some mutations have a greater effect on the final protein. So Duchenne is usually caused by a frame shift mutation, which truncates the protein, which makes it completely non-functional. It's usually first noticeable before the age of 5, and results in loss of ambulation by around age 10, and death in their late teens or early 20s. It's a very serious disease. So what do these patients die from? Usually dilated cardiomyopathy. Becker is both less common and less serious than Duchenne, and is caused by a less functional dystrophin protein rather than a non-functional protein. It's not caused by a frame shift mutation, but usually a missense mutation. The onset is a bit later, usually during adolescence or early adulthood. After this, it varies a lot from person to person, but some may have trouble climbing stairs by the time they turn 20 and die by the age of 40, and others may lead a relatively normal life except that they might need a cane when they get old. In both Duchenne and Becker, the calf muscles are particularly affected, and if you ever see or hear of a patient with a pseudohypertrophy of the calf muscles, think of these diseases, because this pseudohypertrophy is caused by the fiber fatty replacement of muscle tissue, which is what you're seeing in this image. You should also associate with these with the disability to perform a Gower maneuver, especially Duchenne, since it's more serious. This is trying to stand up from a sitting position without using your arms, and the inability to do this is usually due to muscular dystrophy. Diagnosis can also be made by looking for increased creatine phosphokinase in serum, or by doing a muscle biopsy to look for fiber fatty replacement. Another type of muscular dystrophy is called myotonic type 1 muscular dystrophy. This one is pretty rare, kind of like Becker, but it's not related to the dystrophin gene. Rather, it's caused by a trinucleotide repeat of the sequence CTG in the gene DMPK, which stands for dystrophia myotonica protein kinase. Some genetic terms that fit this disease are pleiotropy and variable expressivity. Do you remember what those mean? Basically, you can have a lot of different phenotypes or symptoms, and it differs a lot from one person to the next. You want to suspect this in somebody who walks into your clinic and has obvious muscle wasting, like they're just skin and bones, and maybe when you shake their hand, they seem to have trouble letting go for a couple seconds. What's that called? This is myotonia, which is where the name myotonic type 1 comes from. Myotonia is basically delayed relaxation of the muscles after voluntary contraction. So anyway, those are the biggest things to look out for, but these people will also have cataracts and balding, and are more likely to get cardiac arrhythmias. Patients with this disease don't often die from it, or at least not until they get very old, but if they do die from it, it's usually because of the cardiac effects, and these patients will often end up having a pacemaker put in at some point during their life. All right, time for another flash quiz. So what is the normal function of the CFTR protein? So this secretes chloride in the lungs and GI tract and reabsorbs chloride from the sweat, which is why when this gene is mutated in cystic fibrosis, you can't secrete chloride in the lungs and GI system, which results in thick mucus that causes chronic lung infections and pancreatic insufficiency, and you can't reabsorb chloride from sweat, so sweat will be extra salty.